So tonight, I want to kind of talk a little bit about this phenomenon that I call the, the when it's over moment. Um, y'all, y'all maybe know what I'm talking about, like that moment when it's like, you know this thing is, is coming to an end, right? So maybe it's, maybe it's a really awesome retreat, or maybe it's a school year, or maybe it's, it's being with a sports team. You have that moment like, man, it's, it's over, and you kind of have this little disappointment, and it's, and it's kind of leading up to that. And you have this, this feeling in the pit of your stomach as it leads up to that moment where you know, man, this is going to be over soon. This is going to be done soon. So I want to talk a little about this moment. And I want to share a, a few of my experiences with the quote-unquote when it's over time. All right, y'all, y'all following with me so long? The, the when it's over time, you know, like right after breakthrough is done or right after merge is done, you're like, man, I can't believe it's all over. I got to wait until next year again. It's, it's so far or, or when Christmas is over, your, your favorite trip of the year is over and you're like, man, now I got to wait an entire another year for this to happen again. So my when it's over moment, like the one that I was thinking about this when when I was thinking if I was, the best example that I had was was my senior year of high school. Now I know a lot of y'all can't quite understand that, but but grasp a hold uh, of one of those experiences that you have and apply it to this. And and one day you'll know what I'm talking about. So for me, um, my senior year of high school was this, this, this culminating thing where it was like all these little events that happened and slowly got closer and closer to me realizing this journey that I had been on, this school thing that I had been on for so long, was slowly drawing to a close here in Brentwood. And so for me, it started with things like my senior spring break. Be prepared. You're getting to see younger pictures of Adam. Everyone get excited about that. Yeah, all right. Thank you. So it started with things like my senior spring break because we were, we were, me and all my guy friends were looking forward to going to the beach and all being together. And so we went and it was the thing that we were looking forward to. We were so excited about our senior spring break. And so it happened and then it was over and we had this feeling of like, man, I can't believe that's over. And so then next it was... Um, next it was prom, like prom was like the next big thing to come up. And so I was at prom, there, there I am, thank you. I, I dress up nice, I do say. I dress up very nice, me in a tux there. So, so it was prom because it was like, well, well, spring break's over, but, but now, now there's prom. And so we were looking forward to this, this cool night to go and be with all of our friends. And it was our senior prom. It was going to be such an awesome, cool time. And then, obviously, it's, it's just a night. And so the next day, it was over. And so you had this, man, it's, it's all over moment. And so from that... The next thing I started looking forward to was my graduation party. So me and some of my friends were going to get together, and we were going to have this big party that was celebrating us graduating. And, and so we were so excited about getting together with our family and friends and graduating from that. And so I had my graduation party that I was looking forward to, and, and that happened, and then it was over. And then obviously the next thing was graduation. And so in graduation... Um, it, you know, we were looking forward to this cool moment where we are going to be up there, and me and my friends did some speeches at graduation. We had a lot of fun, and, and then, obviously, that afternoon, it was over. And then there were things like senior choir tour, where we got to go to Chicago, and we were so excited about our senior sunshine choir tour, and, and there was going to be senior nights, and, and that was going to be so awesome. And then, obviously, with the end of the week and home concert, it was over. And then for me, high school and and living in Brentwood was sealed and over with this one thing that happened. It was one of the last things that I did as as a resident here in Brentwood before I went off to college. It was about two weeks before I went to college. For me, playing baseball was everything. Man, I, I loved playing baseball. And so I played on this travel team throughout the summer with a bunch of good guy friends. And towards the end of summer... Um, I remember we, we were in this tournament, and it was kind of one of those do-or-die games. Like, if we won, we were going to keep on playing. And if we lost, then that was it. And for, like, 90% of us, that was it. We were all about to go to college, and none of us had signed to go play in college. And that really wasn't the thing that we were going to go do. And so this was it. 
And I remember like having this feeling in my stomach the entire game, like stressed out about the fact that this huge part of my life, this huge adventure I had been on since I was five years old was probably going to be over at the end of this game. And I remember it was the last inning and we were tied. And, and I mean, you know, this was, this was a huge thing. And, and so it was the bottom of the last inning and, and we were, I was, I was a ca- catcher. So we were out there fielding and we had to hold them and then go into extra innings and, and get some runs. And so I was catching and, and like I said, we were, we were tied up and this guy, <laughs> me and the pitcher talked a few times and this, he threw a pitch fat, fat fastball right down the middle. And this guy cranked a home run further than I've ever seen someone hit a home run. And that was how baseball ended for me. I remember slowly standing up, just vividly remember slowly standing up, taking off my mask and walking to the dugout for the last time. I rode to this game um, with two of my other buddies. And I remember we got, I got into the back seat of my buddy Austin's car and none of us talked. This was like right after the game was over. We took this picture and then we all left. None of us talked on the ride home. And I will honestly admit that I sat in the back seat and just cried my eyes out. I was 18 years old, just got done playing a baseball game, and I was crying my eyes out because I was so sad that this thing that meant so much to me and had had become so much a part of who I was was over. And I just had this sick feeling in my stomach. Man, this is, it's over. It is done. And so I was sad. And, and I still think about that day a lot. So getting, getting to the Bible, Mary Magdalene, we know who Mary Magdalene is, right? Not our heads. She was a friend of Jesus, one of Jesus' followers. And so in John 20, the beginning of John 20, there's this, there's this interesting thing that happens. John 20 is post-crucifixion. So Jesus has died. Jesus has been convicted. He, he went through his, his, his trial-esque. If you're there this morning, you heard Davis talk about the trial. So this has already happened. Jesus has already been crucified. They go put Jesus into the tomb. And then this is, this is where we pick up. So the beginning of John 20, um, Mary and, and Peter and John go to the tomb. They go to the tomb and they realize they are, they are sitting in, in the same moment that I was sitting in, in in my buddy Austin's back seat. They were sitting in this moment of it's over. See, see for Mary, all the disciples, for the past three years or so, they had been on this cool adventure where they were following this guy named Jesus. They were following him and these crazy things were happening and their lives had changed. Like for me, baseball had changed my life so much and it had been this cool adventure that I'd been on. These people were on this awesome adventure with their leader, Jesus. And so they come to his tomb and they are sitting in this moment of this adventure is done. It is over. And so they come up to the tomb, and if things weren't bad enough at this point, something even worse that kind of like digs the knife, like twists the knife in the wound a little bit, they realize that the tomb is empty. So not only has their leader died, been buried, but someone most likely, what they're thinking is, someone most likely came and stole his body. So if it wasn't worse enough that this whole thing is done and and now we don't have Jesus anymore, now someone's stolen his body. And so they sit there in this terrible moment of, God, this is all over. So moving on, they sit there, the three of them sit there for a little bit and eventually John and Peter leave. And that leaves... Mary just sitting there. She's just sitting there and basking in this, this funk, if you will, of realizing that things aren't going to be like they were anymore. And, and that dream that I had of, of this adventure continuing is over. And so she sits there. 
And, and this is in John 20, 11 through 18. And I want to read to you what happens in this passage. Again, let me reiterate that Peter and John have left. It's just Mary sitting outside of the tomb now. Mary stood outside near the tomb crying. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? She replied, they have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've put him. She thinks they've, they've stolen his body. As soon as she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she replied, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go get him. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned at once and said to him in the Aramaic, she said, Rabbioni, which means like teacher. It's this intimate term like master. And Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me for I haven't come up to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and to yours. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Then she told them what, she had, what he had said to her. So here's Mary sitting outside, sulking in this moment, feeling as if there is no hope that is left. She's looking into the tomb and she sees the emptiness that is there. And all of a sudden, this man from over her shoulder is speaking to her. And I imagine Mary being there and like kind of snapping back at him like I talk to my wife when she's walking, watching a show she really doesn't want me to disturb her in. You know, she kind of snaps back at me like, not right now. This is getting really good. And so Mary kind of snaps at this person that she thinks is a gardener. He says something to her. He says, yeah, ma'am, why are you crying? Hush. And then Jesus does something so profoundly simple. He says her name. And for Mary, in that moment, it all clicks. He says her name and she realizes instantly that this is Jesus that she's talking to. And you have to fi figuratively imagine at this moment that, that Mary is rising up out of this funk. Because what does she realize when she knows that it's Jesus? In her mind, she is still in the it's all over. But all of a sudden, man, there's extra innings. It's not over. She realizes that Jesus is there, is present. She rises up realizing it is not over. So Jesus tells Mary, go, tell my brothers and my sisters what you have learned. Go and tell them the good news. And, and what is this good news? What is the good news? It's simple. Jesus is alive. For them, that's all they needed to know. In, in that simple moment, that simple phrase, Jesus is alive. I have seen him. I have spoken with him. They know that it's not over anymore. There is hope. The hope that Jesus had, had declared to them would happen is real. Their adventure is going to continue. We're talking in this series about rising up. In this story, Mary gets this opportunity to, to pretty much literally go from laying on the ground, crying and weeping, and rising up and being the first ones to go share the good news. The commission that we all have, right, go and share the good news, Mary gets to do for the very first time. She rises up and goes and shares the good news. I want to encourage you tonight to realize this. 
just as Jesus said Mary's name and this light bulb went off in her head and she realized what was happening and that it wasn't over and that she had a commission, she had something to go do, she had a purpose, Jesus says your name the same way. I have one last story and, and then I'm done. When I was in, I lost my nose. When I was in eighth grade, I didn't go to church at all. Um, I had been to church probably collectively about 10 times in my life. And so I remember this is very into my eighth grade year. And y'all, you middle schoolers, you know, middle school is not always the easiest of times. And so I was coming out of a rough few years of really trying to figure out who I was. And I remember that one of the biggest figures in my life was my grandfather, who I, I'm named for my father and then him. And so he was so important to me. And I looked up to him, like idolized this man. This was who I followed to know what I was supposed to do with my life. And he had just died. And so I remember sitting at his desk, and, and, and my grandfather was a busy businessman. He never stopped working. And there's mountains of paperwork on his desk, and there's all sorts of things going on. And one thing in that room caught my eye as I'm sitting there contemplating, what the heck do I do with my life from here? Who do I follow from now? And one thing caught my eye, and I didn't realize it until I was about 20, that this was God literally slapping me in the face. The thing that caught my eye was a penny with a cross cut through it. And I'm sitting there saying, who am I going to follow now? Jesus like, drops down a penny in front of me figuratively and says my name. See, I think that <clears throat> we have these experiences like Mary has. Maybe we don't necessarily hear our name audibly. But Jesus comes and puts things in our lives that says our name. And when, when Jesus says our name, he says so much more than just our name. He says, come and, and be part of this adventure. Go and share the good news. Rise up and share the good news. Let me pray for you all.